What's up YouTube? It's time for another in the bag update video. This one is for my current setup as of January 2018. This is my uh, new disc golf cart. It is a Zuka Easy Cart. I have the soldier bag on here. I have a full video showing off the cart. I also have a video showing off how I have it set up right now. So you can check out all that if you're interested. Um, I'll also say before I get into the review that I've probably reviewed almost all of the discs in this bag. Um, yeah, I'm fairly certain I've reviewed every single disc that I carry in this bag. So if you want more information about any of them, you can just look for my full review on that particular disc and uh, get some more info. So let's get into it. We're going to talk about what I'm carrying right now, switch things around a decent amount, but a lot of this stuff is, uh, has been established for a little while, but a little bit different system that I'm working with. Not going to go into any of the other stuff about the card again. You can check all that out uh, separately if you're interested. I'm going to work backwards this time. I'm going to switch it up. This should make it way more exciting than my old older videos if I go from my uh, most overstable driver all the way down to my putter. So let's start there. We have two criminals right now. I have this Biofusion one that is 171 and I have a 170 Lucid Criminal with uh, Riker from the Depot, his stamp on there, or his uh, signature. He owned this disc, he aced with it on the first round and then decided it was a little too beefy for him. Um, but that's, that's what I want these for. I want them to be extremely overstable super meat hook flyers and they work out well. I'm hoping to break this one in um, to see a little bit straighter flight overall that has a, still a lot of integrity to hook up at the end of the flight and then probably keep this one as fresh as I can to just be extremely overstable at all times. You know, rip it over on Anheuser, it'll come right out. Low skip shots. I switched to the Criminal over the Triple X um, because I feel like I have a little more range to it. It's faster so I can throw it a little bit farther and uh, they skip a little better, which I also like for an overstable disc. It's one of the, uh, unless it's really windy out, something I'm gonna use an overstable disc for quite a bit is like a low skip shot uh, with a low ceiling or to bend, you know, flare skip around a corner or something like that. Great to have those, so those are in there. Then we got Trespasses. I got three of them. First, most stable is the uh, 167 pre-Sweden trespass. This one right here is uh, it's got that kind of fingerprinty, um, more towards the opaque, but still pretty translucent, um, old school, um, early run trespass. So this one's really nice. The I think since it's 167, it's actually um, more stable because of that. Some of the kind of 12-speed drivers. Um, or faster discs are a little bit more overstable in lighter weights for some reason. I've heard that about destroyers for sure. Um, Will Schuster used to talk about that and how he would always throw destroyers in the high 160s because they were the most uh, most overstable he could find. This one's definitely the most overstable out of the ones I've had, um, so seems to make sense. But uh, this one, 170, is my old go-to. It's another pre-Sweden. This one I've had forever. You guys have definitely seen it in other videos. Um, I love this disc. It's still really trustworthy. I'll throw this more for distance um, hyzer shots. If I want to stay um, kind of flip up flat and hold really straight and then still finish, or if I want to keep it on a strong hyzer and throw it uh, smooth on a, on a nice hyzer angle and let it fly on a distance hyzer, I'll throw this disc. It's really consistent. It's one of my favorite drivers for sure, and uh, I really like that one. That one's been with me for a long time now. Then I like to have a, a prime one in here as well. Quick tip in the middle of this video, I highly recommend having some baseline plastic somewhere in your bag. If it's uh, a disc that you like and it's available in a baseline plastic, especially if it's a go-to disc like a Trespass. I have a Thrasher as well, I'll show you in a second. It's great to have it in this cheap plastic for a number of different reasons. One, it's really great when it gets wet. So if it's a rainy round, you can go to this one and it'll have a good feel um, even when the, uh, the ground is wet or if it's raining on the disc. Also, it breaks in quickly and this one, um, if I keep working it in, it's gonna get flippier over time and it could become a, a very nice long distance disc based on that as well. It started out really overstable. Keep that in mind with the Prime and uh, Retro Plastic. The drivers start out really overstable. Um, more overstable than a Lucid, I would say. Um, and then it breaks in pretty quick. So this one's about the same now in flight as this one. Um, but it's like it's understudy. That's the other reason why I like the, the uh, cheap plastic. Because I can throw this one in any kind of dangerous situation. If there's a cliff, if there's water, um, if there's just a, a, a really nasty patch of rough or something that I, that I might end up in, I'll throw this one because if I have to replace it, it's not that big of a deal. It's like eight bucks and we're good. I am very soon going to get myself a couple of burst prime trespasses for the bag. 
Um, and then, yeah, we'll see where it happens to this one. But those burst ones look too good. I got to get one at some point. And then we get down to thrashers. Three of those as well. This one is, let's see. Oh, my uh, Prime Trespass 175. I'm terrible at remembering weights on stuff. I believe this one's 173, 174, so it's about max weight. Glow, Thrasher, ESP Plastic. This one feels kind of like hybrid type in between ESP and Z. I would say it doesn't feel like a straight up ESP disc and uh, different, a little different than a regular Z, um, but it's got a great feel. Beautiful disc, feels great. Uh, my friend Andy hooked me up with this one and uh, I love it. It's a great flyer. It's hard to figure out the differences and I haven't had it very long to work with it, but uh, I'm not exactly sure how it flies um, compared to this one and that's just something I'm still working out. It seems like the uh, ESP actually does flip a little more but it might hook up a little more too. Still trying to learn that disc, but this one is probably my go-to driver overall right now. It's a 170 flat, um, big Z Thrasher, beautiful stamp, um, and this thing just bombs. It is a perfect blend of speed and stability for me. It's not too fast, but it's fast enough that it flies really far. It's understable enough that I can flip it up and get it to ride without too much issue, but it's not so flippy that I can't control it. Um, it almost always will finish soft to the left when it slows down. You can throw big turnovers with it if you're a power player. This would be a pretty flippy disc, I would imagine. But for me, it's one of my go-to drivers for distance with uh, accuracy. It's not like a raw distance disc, although if I am trying to throw that kind of a shot, I might reach for this. But I still feel like I am in control of where it's going most of the time. So I throw this disc a lot. Probably my most thrown driver in the bag is that particular thrasher. Then I also have a Pro D Thrasher. It goes all back, right back to what we talked about with the uh, Prime Trespass. This one's my understudy for either of those. It's also it's 172, but it's already broken in a little bit. So this one's flippier, so I can throw this for big distance uh, tailwind shots or maybe really big turnovers. Uh, a little bit faster than my my next disc that I would use for turnovers. But uh, so yeah, it's just a nice one that I can throw. Um, as an understudy to my go-to uh, Big Z and also it'll be a little little flippier for sure and it's going to keep getting flippier over time so that could become a really nice like understable uh, tailwind wide open distance driver then we move on to my last uh, mold of driver in the bag and this one is a fairway driver it's probably around a speed 9 or so I think and it's the Fury I have two of them in the bag I have this one which is a Similar era to the pre-Sweden Trespass era. It's like the printed weight. Let's see if I can show you that. See right there has the laser printed weight on the bottom. Um, that's an indication of uh, it being around the same time period as the uh, pre-Sweden uh, DD stuff. And I really like this disc. It has the same kind of feel to the optoplastic. And this one's a little bit more stable um, than this one. This one's 165. It's very, very flippy. It's got more more dome to it as well. This one's a little flatter. This one's a little more dome. Glides a little farther and holds turnovers like a dream. So this is my roller disc, big turnovers, hyzer flip to flat that'll ride right, hyzer flip to dead straight if I dial it in correctly. Really versatile flyers though. The Furies are great. I got this one and just have it be a and uh, realize it's just a little bit more stable. So I like having them both in the bag. They, they, uh, they layer pretty well. So, moving on to mid-ranges. I only have three different molds of mid-ranges right now as well. Let me think about this. What do I got? I got four, yeah, four molds of drivers, three of everything else. That's cool. Um, most overstable is the Opto Anchor. This one is with the DGN stamp, obviously. Beautiful disc. This thing's really overstable. It's like a big bead mid-range. Very overstable for me. Um, not quite like just as overstable, but nothing really is. Um, but I will never flip it over accidentally and it will fight the wind and it's just a really consistent trustworthy disc mostly use it for short range hyzers um, I just know that's gonna how it's gonna fly I can really trust it on those short range hyzers or a, a, a wide open shorter shorter range shot I'll use this just because it's extremely consistent I know exactly what it's gonna do so if it's just wide open, I can aim this out to the right and rip it. It's not going to go too far, and it's always going to hook up and finish by the bucket, hopefully. Then we have the compass. i got to keep the compass in the bag to show Ricky the love. This one's a pre-world champ, just opaque opto compass. I love these things because they hold lines 
perfectly. This one's a little worked in. I mostly throw it for turnover shots. It holds the turnover start to finish very nicely if you throw it on that Anheuser angle. Um, I can also throw it extremely straight. I can get it to hold a soft hyzer as well. It's a very versatile disc. This is one of those discs that you could have one of these in your bag and cover you on a bunch of different lines. And with being such a, such a fan of Ricky, i got to keep the compass in the bag. Um, I'm not using it as much as I was because for all my kind of straight, um, really straight mid-range mid -range shots that with good distance, I'm switching to the Gobi. This one is my, uh, my go-to mid-range overall right now. Absolutely love this disc. It flies so good for me. Just extremely straight, tons of glide, almost as far as my Furies, I would say. Um, like a fairway driver type distance with mid-range accuracy and control. Amazing feel in the hand. Then I have this first run that I just got for myself for uh, Christmas. Beautiful disc. This one's got a little bit more dome to it. They're both 175. Both my compasses are max weight, by the way. Um, but my compass and the anchor are both max weight. These are both 175. Just beautiful. I love the feel of it. The plastic is tremendous. I love the the shape of it. It's just really comfortable. It's a little lower profile than the compass. They release smoothly and they're beautiful. I can get them to stay on a smooth hyzer if I commit to it. I can get them to turn if I want. I usually use the uh, the compass for turnover shots because I feel like it holds that turnover a little better. The Gobi is so straight that it doesn't want to turn as hard to the right for me. Uh, I, your, your mileage may vary. I'm sure some people consider these to be really flippy, but for me, they're just extremely straight. I love these these discs. They're great, great mid-ranges. Probably my uh, my favorite mid-range that's come out in a long time. Probably since the the Compass before that was my was my favorite mid-range, and the Gobi has kind of worked in on its moved in on its territory, but uh, it's still getting used for sure. Then, moving into putters. This one's strictly for driving and approaching. I uh, may use it for a long putt occasionally if there's like some wind or something, but I kind of doubt it. It's the Electron Soft Envy. The Envy's back in my bag. I'm loving this thing. The Electron Soft plastic, very similar to like a Latitude Soft, um, but since the gyro rim is uh, rigid, the whole disc doesn't feel too floppy, but it has a really nice depression under the thumb. Amazing grip, and these things just fly great. Probably even more glide than, say, a Neutron. Definitely more glide than a Proton in my experience. Um, in terms of the uh, flight off the tee, the Electron Soft is just tremendous. I really like this thing. It feels beautiful, and I really like the Envy for straight, stable tee shot discs. Um, I can throw it about as hard as I want to, and it will just hold really straight up to speed. You can get a really nice, soft, kind of long flex out of it if you want to. It holds hyzer off the tee very nicely as well. And rather than falling out straight down, it sweeps forward as it moves left and hyzers out. So you can sweep around the corner in a really beautiful way with this disc that I really haven't been able to duplicate um, with other discs. But yeah, great, great straight stable tee shot disc to high, putter hyzers that have good glide and distance. I really like that. Then I have Caltrops. Caltrop actually is the disc that kind of moved the Envy out of my bag uh, for a while there because I feel like they're more consistent and they're definitely more controllable because the Envy has that big glide to it. The Caltrop does not. They're a little bit more overstable as well and they don't have as much glide so I can throw these as hard as I want to and I very rarely overshoot the target with them, almost never, um, which I really like. They kind of tend to just kind of hook up and finish near the basket for me, which is great. Principal uh, approach disc is this one right here, this um, yellow, just straight up zero soft caltrop. The, uh, this disc is an ace disc. I aced with it this summer. I actually threw it into the same same basket off the tee on back-to-back -back shots. One was kind of a practice shot. It was my second shot. The next one, it was my first, so it counts. But a bit, technically, I aced back-to-back -back shots with this thing. It's uh, really great for a short, very short downhill hyzer off the tee for a putter. Beautiful. Still a great disc. I, may th I still throw this one. I'm kind of still figuring out exactly how um, to best use it in conjunction with the Envy since they're both uh, capable of flying similar routes at, at a short range. But I think I'm going to use the NV for more longer distance and keep this for more of an approach disc rather than a tee shot disc per se. Um, really like this thing though, and it's a fantastic headwind putter as well. If, if the wind is picking up, you can jam putts with this thing really nicely because it's low profile. It's 
It's somewhat low profile, but it's really flat and it's got that nice stability to it where it's straight, but it doesn't turn on you into the headwind, which is beautiful. I also have a Megasoft Caltrop. This one's super floppy. I like to have it in the bag for very risky, um, risky upshots, I guess. And also, if it's extremely cold outside, this one will feel basically just like my soft and react the same way. The soft really grabs the ground and isn't very likely to stand up and skip or anything like that either. It grabs the ground nicely, but this does an even better job of it. So now that I have the cart, one of the nice things about it is I can just throw this down underneath. Um, you can see that again on the video I did with it, but I have a storage bag under there. I can just throw a couple extra discs down there that I may not use, but I would like to have. That, that one kind of fits in that category. I would imagine when I'm out in the course, this Thrasher and maybe the criminals while I live down there as well just to keep extra space up here because um, I'm not planning on throwing them very often but it's nice to have them and if I got the space and I don't have to carry it uh, which is great I really like the cart um, system it's been working out great mostly what I wanted it for and it's performing flawlessly in this aspect is just I don't want to carry my plastic that's it people are like oh it doesn't have the seat um, okay I'm not really out to play golf to sit down, per se. I'm trying to throw shots and walk around and take deep breaths and <laughs> enjoy being outside and throwing discs. Uh, I could always put my tripod stool on here if I wanted a place to sit down. I just, I just don't want to carry my plastic. I want to be able to have all the stuff that I want to throw and not have to bear the weight of it, including my water and all the other gear. Um, this way I don't have to worry about it so much. Uh, it's really nice. I think a lot of a lot more players will continue to switch to them once you get a you really think about it. It's just not necessary to to carry a big heavy bag when you can roll your plastic instead. It works out nicely. Um, that being said, there's definitely some courses I'm not going to be able to use this cart on out here, like Stub Stewart State Park, Rooster Rock East, uh, places like that that have a really a lot of uh, severe uh, incline and decline. In that, uh, in that situation, I would take out most of this setup and put it in my trooper bag. I really like the trooper bag for carrying, uh, for a bag to carry. It's super lightweight, it's really compact, but still holds all of this plastic um, pretty easily. I might have to take a couple things out in the interest of space, but really not, uh, really not a problem. It's a, it's a beautiful bag, so I really like that one. Okay, let's round it out here. Of course we got soft magnets in the bag. We have this one, it's 165. It's very beat, but it's still pretty straight. It's not super flippy. Um, short range drives, approach shots, um, all that kind of stuff I've been using soft magnets for forever. I'll use this one for. This one is my oldest favorite disc of all time. This one's 165 grams as well. It's quite beat. It's probably even lighter than that now because it's got a bunch of uh, bunch of chunks and stuff taken out of it as you can see I mean this thing is pretty mangled beautiful disc though I love this thing it flies great this one is super flippy so I can start it on hyzer it'll flip all the way over and work to the right um, and it's really nice to snake through some trees on a long technical approach and uh, for a really long go for it putt I might use this one as well because it's lightweight and super flippy so it'll hold really straight all the way into the bucket but my main putter finishing it off here is the jawbreaker magnet this one is max weight love this thing it's broken in nicely now to the point where it's extremely straight it was i mean it's straight off the shelf it's beautiful and it holds a great line um, but this one's even broken in just that little bit more and uh i hit a lot of longer putts with this thing it's it's wonderful i feel like i don't know maybe in the next year or so i'll consider putting a fresh one in start working in because i don't want it to get too flippy but it's not hampering my putting performance by any means. I love this thing. Jawbreaker plastic is great. It feels kind of similar to like a Trilogy Medium uh, type feel to it where it's soft but it's not soft as soft as the soft magnets. It's got some give to it but not a lot. Um, just a little bit under the thumb but still re releases really clean. Great grip. I love the Jawbreaker magnet. I uh, By far the best uh, right now at putting than I've ever been in my career and Part of it has to be down to just how well this thing works with my, my form. It just stands up and floats perfectly straight all the way into the bucket. That is my bag set up for January 2018. Thanks so much for coming along for the ride. Let me know if you have any questions about any of this stuff. As I stated earlier, all of these discs have full reviews out there on, uh, on YouTube as well. If you're interested, just search Disc Golf Nerd and the mold name um, and it'll pop right up. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll check you later. Cheers!